How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to show you how to install gutters. I have this detached garage behind me. It has a new roof and I want to get gutters on both sides to go ahead and collect the water from the roof and get it where I want it to go opposed to just dropping right at the foundation. Now this can cause problems especially in your home if you have a basement or crawl space and you're not diverting that water away from your home. Well that can lead to big issues down the road. And then at the end I'll point out what most people overlook which is a critical step right at the end that you do not want to miss to make sure you get the end product that you're looking for. So let's jump into it and get the measurements on this roof so we know how long of a gutter we need for each side. So first up I'm just going to start off up here on top of the roof and I want to go shingle to shingle all the way across. Now if you have a run that's more than your 25 foot measure you might need to have a paint marker or sharpie with you so you can mark it on the shingles so you can mark it here and then take your second measurement to add those together. So I got my first measurement marked it was 24 feet. And I'm gonna go again to the edge of the shingle. And now I have three feet and seven inches. So I wanna add those together to get 27 feet, seven inches. And I wanna go a half inch past on each side. So what I'm gonna do is make a gutter that is 27 feet, eight inches long to give me just a little bit of overhang past the shingles on each side. So now you have your measurements, let's talk about your options for gutters. Most of us do in DIY, you're probably just gonna get sections of gutters from Home Depot or Lowe's or in my area, you can go down to the Menards. Five inch is gonna be your standard for residential, unless you're feeding a lot of roof surface into one gutter, then you might wanna step up to a six inch, just get a little bit more capacity. I have five inch here and Menards carries 16 feet sections. So that means I just need two sections and one seam. I wanna reduce the amount of seams that I'm going to have to do just from a workload perspective, but also from a future source of leaks perspective. But depending on which home improvement store you go to, you might only find 10 foot sections. So just a heads up. Now, another alternative is you could reach out to a seamless gutter installer in your area, give him the exact dimensions that you have, and they will stop by with their box van where they have a roll of aluminum and they can go ahead and pump out that exact length of gutter with no seams and you can go from there. It's gonna cost a little bit more, but he's not installing it. So if you can get them to stop by, it usually is a reasonable cost and you're gonna reduce the overall seams. It's gonna be a better look and less leak points. So that is an option if you wanna go down that path. Now for me, I have the two 16 foot sections. So I'm gonna use one complete section at 16 feet. And then remember I need 27 feet, eight inches. So then I'm gonna measure 11 feet, eight inches, and also add three inches. I'll show you here in a second why I'm adding that additional three inches. So I've already made my mark at 11 feet, 11 inches. So let's go ahead and cut this gutter. Now you could use a hacksaw, but for something like this where it's not a flat surface, I really like a four inch grinder with a cutoff wheel. I use this for a lot of different projects and it comes in super handy. Just remember, wear your eye protection while using the cutoff wheel. Then once I get the irregular side done, once you have just the flat surface on the back side, that is where tin snips come in handy and make quick work with a nice clean cut. All right, so now we need to bring together the multiple sections and you will find these seams at pretty much any home improvement store. I don't necessarily like these, but maybe you wanna go with these and the way they'll work is you'd line those up which each side here, and it'll take a little bit of doing as the gutters do kind of deform out of shape. But then once you get lined up, now you would put a bead of seam sealant inside of these channels here to give you a watertight fit, but I do not like this. The water's gonna shed this way. I'm gonna bring these together, but I really don't have overlap like you would have on shingles or pretty much anything where you have gravity pushing water off your roof surface, pushing water down your gutter system. I like to have an overlap. So what I'm gonna do, instead of using one of these, I'm simply gonna make a, a modification. This is gonna be the higher side. This is gonna be the lower side. So I want this on top. As water flows down through this gutter, I want it to be on top and then the water transfer to this part of the gutter with a three inch overhang. 
Now that should keep me watertight because I'm gonna lay a bead of seam seal here and then I'll rivet those together and it should be a better finished product that will stand up for more years without a leak. And remember, that is why I added the additional three inches to make up for this overlap. As I overlap three inches, I'm still gonna get my length that I want, which was 27 feet, eight inches. So let's tie these two guys together and then we'll put on our end caps. So now on this section that's gonna go on top, I just need to trim off a small piece on this upper edge. Edge. Once that's off, I can use this Amera Max seam sealant, and you'll find a link below the video in the description of the exact seam sealant and the few other tools that we'll be using. I'll lay down a healthy bead, and then I'll do that three inch overlap. Once that is in place, then I'll go ahead and drill the holes for two rivets holding this first section. Now you see there's a little gap on the back side, but don't worry, I'll address that once we get back to the other side. Four rivets in the front side might be a little overkill, but remember, I am gonna be doing this as a one-man job. So using the clamps here, I'll bring together those two pieces before putting these rivets in place. Additionally, once everything's in place, I will lay down additional sealant on the inside, making sure it's watertight. It ain't pretty, but this should be watertight. And remember, we're using gravity to work in our favor with this three-inch overlap. Okay, so now we're going to do our end caps. Just know there are left and right hand side, so you need to get the right one. This one obviously is going to be the left hand side. We will again use our seam sealant here on the inside of this channel and then place it on. And I'll show you how I'm going to secure it and then also talk about a specialty tool you can get that might help you out. Now we'll do another healthy bead here on this end cap. It can get a little messy, so it's not bad to have some shop towels around to kind of wipe that extra gray off so it, you don't have gray all over your white gutters. So you press that in place, use a hammer, making sure it's fully seated, and then I'll start on one side here, just setting my two rivets, knowing it's fully in place. Then I'll get the hammer out again, going onto the next surface, tap it in place, and again, complete it all the way around with rivets. This is where there's a different tool. There is a crimper tool. The link right below the video will show you the crimper tool you might wanna get. It comes in super handy, but you can also do it like this with rivets. Then we'll do our last end cap here. Same process, pressing it in place. We'll have a little extra squishing out the bottom there using the hammer. And you do not have much of a lip to work with, so you do have to be pretty precise with those drilled holes to make sure that your rivets fully seat and pull everything together. We'll finish this bottom one, add two more, and then I'll show you on the inside again, it's nothing wrong with doing a little generous portion of the sealant to make sure everything's watertight. So I'll wipe off this outside, but I'll lay additional sealant on the inside, tooling or smoothing out that sealant, making sure that there's no gaps for water to escape out of and then create leaks in the future. But I do wanna get a dimension on where I need to cut my downspout in the gutter. And when I measure off of the end here of the downspout, I see that I need to go in about 11 inches to line it up so I can secure the downspout to my siding here. So I'll go ahead and trace this out and then use a combination of that cutoff wheel and my tin snips to cut this out and then rivet this into place with laying down some sealant to make sure we have a nice watertight fit. Now, if you don't have the cutoff wheel, which is what I use for a lot of this, you can also just use a metal hole saw to create a hole and then use tin snips to cut that out. Just remember, tin snips have straight cut, they cut in a straight line, then they have left hand and right hand cut where they're made to cut around the left hand or right hand radius of a circle or a cut like this. So that's why you'll see the different colored handles. Now once that's in place, it's a pretty similar process to our seam and then our end caps. I'm gonna place the sealant down to make sure we have a nice watertight seal, press it in place, and then I'll start to screw out those holes, placing four rivets in. I'll do two on one side, pressing it down, making sure it's tight to the gutter, and then two on the other side, getting everything secure. So now I just take a four foot level, or you could use any straight edge, any piece of two by four. And what I wanna do is then take a small piece of the gutter. This is my high side. 
So I want to set this where the gutter is not hitting the extension of the slope of the roof. So I wouldn't want to go too high with this, but this is my high side. And then from this high side, I'll show you how I'll use a chalk line and a small bubble level to make sure we have a nice slope. About a half inch per 10 feet of run of your gutter would be more than enough. So I'll go ahead and just mark this for this side. Then all I'm gonna do is just set a nail here. That is where I'm gonna run this chalk line from. So then I'll meet you guys down at the other end. We'll snap this chalk line and that's gonna give us a reference line so we always know where the top of the gutter should be once we start sinking our screws. All right, so we got our chalk line down here. I'll start to pull that taunt getting ready to snap my line. And then I'll just use a small torpedo level to reference the slope. Again, I just want a nice gradual slope. Only need to drop about an inch and a half to one inch for this whole run here. All right, so, so that should give me plenty of slope. So I have my line, I'll just pull that tight and we'll go ahead and give it a snap. Okay, so now we have our reference line to start mounting our gutter, but first we need to actually set the brackets on the ground. You wanna do as much as possible on the ground, especially when you're trying to do this as a one-man job. So you got a few different options for mounting. This is the one that I prefer. It seems to be the crowd favorite. It hooks on the front side here, and then we'll hook over the back side, and it's fully concealed, and you're able to use your impact driver to bring that home. Now, it's better to actually try to sink this into a solid piece of wood opposed to just your fascia board. So if you have an open garage or you can actually see where your joists are located and the spacing, that might justify where you are placing these, but you should place them about every two feet on your gutter to make sure you have a secure hold. So if you do have a helping hand, this would be a, a good time for it, but you don't have to have it if you got everything laid out. What I'm gonna do is take my full section here. I'm gonna go ahead and position it, support it on the one side on my ladder, and then I'm gonna go on that far side where the downspout is, and now I'll go ahead and secure this end. Once that's secured, I'll go secure that end where I need it, and then we'll fill in the middle, securing each one of these screws. You wouldn't want to go too much longer than this. You can see it's kind of bowing in the middle. So we don't want to give any issues here. I just go ahead and set it to my small overhang that we want. You need to have your impact driver already ready to go. Then you're going to set that top edge to your chalk line and go ahead and drive it home. Now go ahead and hit another one right here in the middle so we don't bend our gutter. And raise it up right to the line there. And then drive it home. All right, so gutter is secure now on our fascia board. Everything's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and put together my downspout, get that mounted, and then outline that number one mistake, kind of where everybody leaves this project short, but something you really need to consider to make sure we're getting the water diverted where we want it. All right, so downspouts are pretty easy to put together. There's a few different principles that you need to know. Uh, here on our elbows, that's gonna, have one elbow that's gonna kick us in, and then you cut a custom length section, here is eight inches for me, to another elbow. And just remember, you're gonna have an outside and an inside basically to every one of your elbows, every one of your sections. If you're trying to put two outsides together, there's gonna to be a ton of interference and you're just gonna be fighting with it. Alternatively, there are downspout crimpers that just help you crimp an outside pull it in a little bit so that it's a lot easier to fit it in. 
Overall, you wanna make sure that your fittings that are above are inside. You wouldn't want something where the water's flowing and it's on the outside of the lower piece. That's gonna be a leak. So you always want this piece to be inside of this next piece this piece to be inside of this next piece and so on and that's how you build your downspout out then we go ahead and just fit that up and then just use some self-piercing screws here to connect to our gutter and then make sure you put a few self-piercing screws into each one of these and i'll show you how to then secure it to your siding now securing the downspout to the wall you have a few different options they're kind of like these concealed brackets they go on the back side here First, we'll screw them to the siding, and then we'll go ahead and put our self-piercing screws in here to get it mounted. But before I set this, I do wanna use my torpedo level, just make sure we got everything plumbed up here. Then I can go ahead and mark the bracket, and then sink some screws there to secure it to the siding. So the downspout is secured, we're good to go, but what is that mistake? And that is right here, just leaving it here, not actually taking this water somewhere depending on your lawn slope. Now it's gonna be different for all of us. Some of us have an amazing runoff and we're able just to put a small extension on and get that water far away from our foundation. Now there's a few different options depending on your scenario that I wanna direct you to. This video right here is just gonna show you three basic options and it's gonna progress in complexity. If you have a completely flat yard and you don't know how to manage that water, check out a dry well installation I did at my home, which was that scenario. And then if you just need to get that water far away and you're gonna lay down PVC or conduit and you need to understand the slope in your yard, how deep to dig, check out this video right here. It'll walk you through all those steps and make sure we get this water away from our foundation, mitigating any issues in the future. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.